Okay, hi guys. Today's um, homework is going to be about identifying minerals. We have an upcoming mineral identification lab. So we're going to talk about the different properties that you're going to look at to help you figure out what kind of minerals you have. Um, so our objectives with our assignment is you're going to learn which mineral properties are most important to identify your minerals. Some properties are easier, better to use than others. And um, we're going to learn the different ways to identify your minerals. Today we're just going to do three of the different physical properties for identifying your minerals and we'll finish the others in another assignment. Just to review, remember that there's five characteristics that all minerals have. So to be a mineral, something has to, one, be naturally formed. Two, it has to be inorganic, which means not living, never having been alive. It has to be a solid, so it has to have a definite shape and a definite volume. It has to have a set chemical composition, which means it's going to be an element or a compound that has a unique, consistent chemical makeup. It's not going to vary from sample to sample. And then number five is the atoms arranged in a pattern. That um, pattern that's repeated over and over is called a crystal. And even if you can't see a crystal shape in the sample that you have, all minerals still form crystals, that repeating pattern of the atoms. So, looking at minerals, there's about 4,000 different minerals on Earth, and you're going to need to identify all of those. No, just kidding. We are just going to do a few of the most common minerals. So, while there's about 4,000 minerals on Earth, there's about, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 rock-forming minerals. And 90% of the crust is going to be made up of compounds of silicon and oxygen. So not silicon and oxygen by themselves, but other compounds that contain those two elements. Those are the two most abundant elements on Earth. So with all of those 4,000 different kinds of minerals, how do scientists identify them? How do they know when they dig them up out of the ground what kind of mineral they have? Well, they look at their properties. Mostly their physical properties are what we're going to be looking at, but they can also look at their chemical properties. So here's a few that we're going to be looking at to help you identify your unknown minerals. And again, we're going to be looking at their physical and chemical properties, mostly physical properties. But remember when we did our mystery powder lab, we were looking at the physical and chemical properties of those six white powders to help you identify what kind of white powder it is. It's the same thing that scientists do that we're going to do with our minerals. We're going to look at their physical and chemical properties, compare those to a chart of known properties, and use that to help you identify what kind of mineral you have. All right, let's get started on the physical properties of minerals. The first one that we're going to look at, oh, we should probably set up our notes first. So on a piece of paper, you're going to need a piece of paper in the notes section of your binder. You're going to make your paper look like this. We're just going to, again, do a T-chart. Let's see if I can hold this where you can see it. We're going to title it Identifying Minerals. On the left-hand side, we're going to put the physical property that we're talking about today. We're going to start with color. And then on the right-hand side, that's where you're going to put your notes, your examples, all the important information about that particular physical property. Okay. If you need more time to get that copy down and set up, just go ahead and pause the video. Let's talk about color. Color is the first thing that students notice, that anybody notices about a mineral. So they look at the color, and the color is the easiest thing to see. It's the first thing that you notice, but it's not necessarily the best thing to look at to identify the mineral. The reason is, is because some minerals come in lots of different colors. So if you're using the color alone or you're relying too much on the color, you're probably going to identify your mineral incorrectly. A lot of the minerals have different colors because they have small amounts of impurities in the mineral. So that's why certain kinds of minerals can come in lots of different colors. There are a few minerals that come in a characteristic color, which means they kind of stand out. Their color is very distinctive. It's always the same. It doesn't vary a lot. And so for those, color can be helpful. One of the examples of that is sulfur. So here is sulfur. And sulfur, you can see, is a bright yellow color. It also has kind of a rotten egg smell, so that's another way to identify it. But sulfur is very distinctive. Sulfur always looks like this. If you had a pile of minerals, you could probably immediately pick it out based just on the color. But most minerals, unfortunately, aren't that easy to identify by their color. Here's an example. All of these pictures are quartz. And so we've got colorless quartz. We've got a brownish kind of quartz, purple quartz, 
smoky quartz, which is gray to black. So while all of these are the same mineral, they have different colors. You wouldn't want to use color to try to identify quartz. And there's lots of other um, minerals that are colorless. So you might think, oh, this is quartz because it's colorless. Well, halite's usually colorless. Calcite can be colorless. So don't use the color alone. All right, our next property that we're going to look at to help you identify the mineral is called streak. And streak is the color of the powder of the mineral. So looking at the powder, the powder color can sometimes be different than the color that you see on the mineral. So you can see in this upper corner picture, while this mineral is kind of a grayish black, you end up with a brown, brownish red kind of a streak. This mineral here is kind of a goldish color, but you end up with a gray streak. So sometimes it can be kind of surprising. You don't necessarily get the same color of streak as you do for the mineral. Now, to do this, your mineral has to be softer than the streak plate. The streak plate, I think, is about six and a half for its hardness. So some of the harder minerals, you can't test the streak on because they're just not, they're harder than the streak plate, so they're not going to rub off any of the powder onto the streak plate. It's also, and here's what a streak plate looks like. You can see there on the, um, on the PowerPoint, here we are going to be using these streak plates. And what you'll do is you're just going to rub the mineral on the streak plate to get a little bit of the powder off. Now, for safety reasons, make sure you're not ever holding this in your hand just in case you would press really hard and for some reason it would break. They're pretty durable, but because of safety, always make sure it's flat on a table. Um, you can also see from these pictures that the same mineral can come in different colors, just like we said previously for the color information, but it's always going to have the same color of streak. So this is hematite, and this is hematite down here in the lower left. And you can see they vary in their color. But when you do the streak and you rub some of the powder off, the streak is both kind of a reddish brown. Here again, you can see a different color streak. Here's pyrite, which is a brassy yellow color. It makes a, a grayish black kind of a streak. So you're not always going to have the same color as the color of the mineral. So streak can help identify quartz because we said earlier that while quartz comes in lots of different colors, the streak is always the same. I think my little picture didn't pop up on there. You get the idea. All right, so streak's more reliable than color because while the color of the mineral can vary, its streak is going to remain consistent. All right, our third property. Our third property that we're going to look at is luster. And luster refers to the way that the mineral reflects light. So some minerals reflect light in a metallic way. They look like a piece of metal, and some minerals don't look metallic. Those are our two main groupings for luster that you need to know about. Now within those, especially within the non-metallic group, there's lots of variation. But if you look at it and it looks like a piece of metal, like pyrite here, you're going to describe its luster as metallic. If it doesn't, it's going to be non-metallic. There we go to our next slide. Okay, so the metallic, here's some examples of metallic minerals. They look like pieces of metal. And here are some examples of non-metallic. So you can see that the non-metallic can be described in different ways. Non-metallic has a lot of variety to it. They can be shiny. Now, this is different than being metallic. So things can have a shiny appearance but not look like a piece of metal. You'll have minerals that look glassy. They look like a piece of glass. They might be colored, but still have that glassy appearance. And then non-metallic minerals can also be described as earthy. They just look like typical, regular old rocks. They have that dirty, earthy kind of appearance to them. All right, next on your paper, we're going to give a few examples. My PowerPoint's kind of slow today. Um, first of all, here is talc. Talc is a non-metallic luster, and it's pearly. It has kind of a shimmery kind of appearance, and so we describe that as pearly. Our next one is kaolinite. It's non-metallic as well. Notice it doesn't look like a piece of metal, and it's described as earthy non-metallic because it's one of those that looks just like a regular old dull rock. Here's our next, Galena. Galena has a metallic luster. You can see it's silvery. It looks like a piece of metal. 
and then our next example you're going to do on your own. So on your notes page, down at the bottom, I want you to list mineral one. And you're going to have some practice with identifying the luster for this particular mineral. Here's your four choices. Do you think this mineral has a metallic luster? Is it non-metallic earthy, non-metallic glassy, or non-metallic pearly? So just write mineral one and which kind of luster you think it has, and we'll check it tomorrow in class. Mineral two should pop up. There it goes. How about this mineral? Again, list mineral two and pick which one of those lusters you think describes the mineral. Mineral three and mineral four. So once you have those four identified with their luster, you're done for today. Bring those back. We'll discuss them and check them tomorrow. Make sure if you have any questions, if anything didn't make sense to you or you thought of some questions as we were going through the PowerPoint, write those down in your notes, jot those down in your notes tomorrow or today, and we'll discuss them tomorrow. Thanks. See you guys then.